everyone welcome to anika small talk session this is shruti parakanti and today we have a very special guest nilakanta banu prasad who is a well known math- mathematician he is also known as the fastest human calculator we are um, really amazed to have him here and i'm looking forward um, that you will have an amazing host and of course an amazing uh, creator today he is uh, an olympic gold medalist in mathematics he has also been featured in uh, bbc and uh, cnn uh, yeah let me just add him he has been doing wonders at a very young age he's just 21 and he has actually been breaking records hello Hi Banu I think there's a network issue let me just add Again hello yeah, can yeah, you hear yeah. me Yeah I can hear you hello hello Shruti how are you doing Amazing how are you I'm great I'm great as well Hi uh, Hi we are very honored to have you here and thank you for coming on Anika small talk session Yeah uh, it's how- a pleasure it's a pleasure and yeah it's good to join you guys to have a what do you guys say a small talk session let's see how this goes but yeah hello everyone who's watching this bhanu here hi yeah yeah i have introduced you uh, to the audience can you please tell us about yourself in your own words sure so um okay i mean i hold a few world records that's a little bit about it but uh, i'm someone who's passionate about mathematics and i've been looking at math as an art form for a long long time now and i believe that this is an art form this is a sport which every single child out there is deprived of because of the general phobia there is of math and what it is so yeah i would consider myself to be someone who uh, who wants to get on to change the perception of it across the globe so yeah um, other than what you've introduced that's pretty much it i hold a few world records and for the people who are here who watch movies yeah i broke one of the records which is held by um, someone as great as mr shakuntala devi garu who was one of my childhood inspirations yeah yeah so when did the whole maths journey has started when was the first time you fell in love with maths and numbers so um for me math was something which i've um, seen ever since the beginning of uh, of my education or childhood um i met with an accident when i was 5 when i was bedridden for an entire year and this was when um my parents were told that you'll probably go explore uh, uh, may- maybe keep him mentally active by doing some sort of a, a mental game or an exercise or anything that'll be that'll be something helpful so that point of time i realized that um, i was doing a lot of puzzles and stuff but numbers really intrigued me a lot and from there there was no looking back so um i would probably even bisect and talk about this in a stretch because um, my love for numbers was not just something which happened and then had to stay because i think um it is genuinely like a sport where you have an interest you pursue it and then you fall in love with it much more and after a point it becomes a part of your identity that's amazing like uh, this was uh, my next question uh, should maths be a born skill or uh, it is something that is adaptable with time or it is a learnable skill so my question for people who will probably hear is do you think everyone can have a six pack um, uh, body who is which is very fit absolutely right everyone who can but it's just that it takes a certain effort so if i have to put it this way math in general is something which everyone understands in the world take a 2 year old baby or let's say take a 6 month old baby put him or her in the men- in the center put them in the center of the room put five chocolates on one end put 25 chocolates on the other the kid will go to 25 the kid knows 25 is greater than 5 even though they might not know what 25 or 5 is so the perception of knowing math is intuitional but the art of developing it is beyond so it's like this kids know how to make sound but to learn music is a different thing kid kids know how to how to uh, make sense of the things around them but language is what translates them so in a similar sense numerical and quantitative ability is in everyone and and uh, let me not confuse you guys when i say math and don't think of the school math where you're supposed to solve equations and stuff no i'm talking about um something as basic as basic calculation is it's just beautiful how it 
can transform the way even an adult looks at the world in general which is it's it's sort of like for the people who are probably watching this on instagram right now it's like a filter right when you take a photo you put a filter it's vibrant so think of it having a math filter when you look at it you look at it in a very different way and i yeah, definitely exactly. think it's not a bond scale it's something which everyone can everyone can gain everyone can learn everyone can experience that's amazing how was your uh, school education like did it help you or uh, was it constructional how, how did you term it as like did you start uh, loving math when you were in school or it's something that is personal like you learned it by yourself so i thought much more so i personally think that there is no one way in which i've learned math so if i have to put it this way it's like saying that um it did have its role the school did have its role but at the same time uh what was taught in school what was expected for you to learn at school is very different from how my experience towards math has been and uh if i have to put it out there in a very blatant sense you start your schooling you learn poems first right you learn you learn poems you learn stories you learn stuff like this and then you eventually go to studying grammar but you don't do that in math you start with the grammar you start with what multiplication is addition is then you apply it so in a very in a very structural manner the school way disincentivizes someone to actually learn math the right way so um for me i found my love for it in an alternate sense and after that it made sense why things were happening the way they were happening in school but i found my love externally and i think this is something which everyone would agree which is that um the time you fell in love with language was probably when you went to your first debating competition you know the the place where you fell in love with music was when you heard someone sing it's not when you were taught a lesson so inspiration never comes from lessons and i personally think that experiencing the joy and um the reason why you learn something which is let's say for the first time when i looked at fibonacci numbers and how they behaved and uh, how it was very artistic in its sense that's when i fell in love with art and math both of both something which mean a lot to me today and yeah i'm i'm, I'm rather on the other side of the academic angle of what math is so um at any given point of time in this conversation when i say math i'm referring to the art and the sport not the subject yeah that's amazing how you relate maths to art that's something that i've first time heard in your stories or your profile i would say that's something nobody really talks about it's never considered to be as art and i think this is um the impact of the conventional schooling that we have so how important is it that the conventional schooling things change how important is the change in the schooling and the change in the way people approach maths um for instance let me sum it up for you in in let's say saying according a couple of examples here okay so um let's let's look at it this way conventional schooling is great right at the end of the day it does what it has to it prepares you for a world out there where you can find your opportunities and getting getting uh, placement or living a happy life living something whatever but at the end of the day and that's majorly why a reason why majority of the arts are left out of schooling right because you can't really put a weight on an art right today at the end of the day um the best artists out there are are outcasts from schools the people who have overcast come over and figured that their love for this can also keep them keep them going and stuff but if you look at it this way um the focus and the sheer focus on math to be an intrinsic requirement for someone to excel in life sort of pushes people away from it and um that's because people fail to see the beauty because of the over stressing of the academic angle to it just imagine if i made singing a compulsory subject in day 1 of school and i told you and started with what sargams are and then i go ahead and say that these are the 12 notes which form the indian ragas and then i teach you the rigor of what the 72 melakartas are and i make you to remember them i make all of you remember it and then i will give you and get hold of an instrument in 12th grade where i will tell you this is the beauty of music now will there be as many musicians no because you are telling them the procedure before the beauty and that yes. is something which conventional schooling has in a good way not affected art <laughs> but in math it has ruined it for a lot of people and that is something which i personally think is a bad thing because um you look at math as a tool for science you look at math as a 
as a as a tool to understand the world but not as something which is by itself very beautiful and a very good way of looking at the world around you and um for me this realization came when i was a kid when i realized that hey i mean if i have to actually see this particular art right right now i mean when i i was i was actually looking at um a, a mandala art you know what mandala arts are right so the circular mandala arts so um i realized that if you drew this tiny piece of it and then then copied and put all of them here it's it's the same figure you don't have to draw all of them right but um that's not true always and i think this is something which i will talk about a little later some time in my side is that um the mandala arts number of the amount of angle which you need to draw to get the entire art is dependent on the lcm of the number of curves across so um so the so basically it's a very fun way to look at it saying that if i have let's say a circle with 16 petals and another circle with 24 petals then i can divide it at most into how many which is highest common factor or the least common multiple if i go by it it's 48 so it's by 2 by 3 so minimum six halves is what i will have to do so six six parts so i mean these don't look very natural but um it's everywhere be it be it um the way world works be it let's say the days of week be it weather be it uh be it music be it be it every combination of whatever happens i was a trained carnatic classical musician myself and i i was into vocal carnatic and i realized that the dattu swaras are nothing but 1 4 3 2 1 2 3 4 2 5 4 3 2 3 4 5 it's a progression which goes into a cyclic thing so if you legitimately remember the first seven notes or eight notes of this everything is replicable and um and why would someone actually have probably thought about this is uh, is very mathematical in nature someone who did this because they want you to sort of practice and be able to control your chords also analytically mathematically map them in such a way so um what people who do not enjoy the world, love of the world the, the the beauty of mathematics is that you look at it as a subject you look at it as a way which you need to understand something but the moment you look at it as an art form you'll try to see how this connects to everything around you and that's what i think is the beauty of it and that's something which i personally think has been the major learning in me becoming the fastest human calculator sure because um, on that end i believe that there is a lot of um, intervention between the way you learn mathematics at the same time the way you develop cognitively so uh, cognitive development happens through language and numbers two standard pillars and to have both of them very strong enough is a is a dream come true and i i i dream of a of a of a of a place where people really look forward to math as an art form as a sport not as a subject which is mandatory and keeps asking them questions which they really can't relate to yeah i think anybody who talks to you regarding math will fall in love with it because uh, the way you explain it uh, sounds so good like beautiful is what you use and i like relating maths to art is like very new to me i'm i'm hearing it from you do you think uh, adults can ever get over the max phobia because as kids uh, i heard you have a dream about 10 million kids we'll talk about it later in the session but how about the adults who have maths phobia can they ever get over it absolutely and i think that um, the phobia of math is because of the misconception of what math is about and the moment that stigma is broken in fact let me tell you if this is the world you want to get to a world where there is no math phobia the people who are right there in the middle are mathematicians math teachers school curriculum people who will tell you that math is important people who tell you that math is hard people who tell you that math is very relevant to what you do the moment and the the, the day you keep over glorifying it is the day it becomes more far away than what it should be so i personally think that taking small steps towards engaging people into saying that hey this can actually be fun this is how you start and i believe that with exploring infinity is whatever we do and stuff gamifying math is is the goal art making and appreciating art through math appreciating math through art these are all it's it's, it's similar right at the end of the day if you look at it if someone falls in love with music it's it's um natural that they appreciate the beauty of dance it's natural that they appreciate the beauty of any other art form right so when someone has a respect for an art form they have a respect for all the art forms whether they 
relate to it or not and because they all work with the work with each other very together right so the end of the day the philosophy of an art thinker is very similar and i personally believe that this is something which is existent and very prevalently put out there if you look at math and um, that's by not talking to you about what fractions could be or what 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 variables are and stuff but about making you understand and look at the general world around you and and make people understand that this is relevant right whether i know it or not is sure that because at the end of the day you don't really have to be an artist to appreciate art right you don't have to not everyone has to be an artist but to be able to appreciate it i think until the day we have it as a subject which is given in textbooks that is problem and until the day when there and i think that that moment is coming in india from my victory in olympic gold medal when my world records and stuff people are relating and knowing of a mathematician who's doing stuff right that's that's quite not usual recognizing a mathematician by the face on a street is a big step towards this and that's something which i think is the first step towards seeing that okay there is someone who knows what they do and let me see if i can make sense of of this um in what i do right so adults definitely through games through activities and more importantly by engaging in conversations and looking forward to streams like these where um where people talk about the different walks of life and how they merge together to what math could have to offer offer them because um everyone knows math is everywhere it's not it's not that's not a new point the point is that it's beautifully fit there is is i think the essential um, communication the moment that happens i think it's it's just an upway regardless of where you are from regardless of who you are uh um, the moment you say that this is interesting getting hold of it is not easy is not is not hard and if i have to put it this way um it's like it's like language also to a certain extent because and and the reason why i say language is because um unlike art form language is very intuitive to a human being they are born with the uh notion to learn language it happens somehow it's very artistic in its sense on how it happens but the moment it fits in it's very natural like when i speak to you i'm using subject object verb correlations i'm i'm putting in cohesive co- co- coherent sentences together at the end of, and, and i'm also using conjunctions i'm i'm talking about verb forms i'm trying to speak in one tense maintaining consistency across lines and at the same time also visually trying to say and tell you what i'm thinking here right so if you look at it language is not as easy as it looks like it's just that it has been made look easy and that's why it is easy for you today math similar it is easy but it has to flow naturally to you it cannot be one way thought right the, that that is yeah. the fundamental problem and that that i think will change by first accepting that what it is is that math is an art form and let me look at it look, look at it in that particular angle and how yeah uh, we also have someone asking did the vedic maths or the mental maths help you to okay reach so mental the maths work okay mental yeah. math is to just be able to do calculations in your head so at the end of the day regardless of the method you use it's still called mental math you use a bacchus you use vedic math it's still called mental math i personally don't believe that vedic math and a bacchus are good for people the reason is that if i have to walk for 100 meter to or if i have to run for 100 meters i should run for the 100 meters i should not take a shortcut and the moment i take a shortcut it's not running anymore it's a different art definitely i don't i don't disagree with it but it's just that you're not training your brain to run quickly and that i think is is what i believe is the success of me winning the world record which i believe that using the same things math is see it's imagine this if i ask you how long does it take for you to think about a story you can't really measure it there are ways to refine it there are ways to change it there are ways to change. how long does it take to create a song i can't really measure it how long does it take for you to do a math calculation i can measure it so math is a good yardstick for cognitive ability development right it's a good yardstick it's a good measure and and uh, the absoluteness the nature of absoluteness uh, makes you that so use it to the fullest without using shortcuts is what i would say because if you if you if you're using skates to go for the 100 meter race tomorrow the same legs won't help you to mountaineer but if you run you are fit enough to do anything else you want and i think that is the essence of what this is all about yes and i also heard you saying um, if you know ma- 
if there's somebody who wants to talk about there are apples there are many apples and when there's a person who knows math he'll tell there are 25 apples accurately so that's the difference uh, so absolutely in fact in fact i think a lot a lot of people i don't know if a lot of people know this but um, there is something called the chomskyan theory of language and i'm i'm sure a lot of people might have heard noam chomsky says um, that the world you look at is through a glass called language right you have a bias on what you look at the world around you you don't actually look at what you look your language makes you look what you want to look and that, this might not make sense to you but um but let me let me try right let me try telling you what this is so um the people have seen that um norwegians norwegians norway people people from norway can actually distinguish between multiple snowflakes types of snowflakes whereas swedish can't although they both live in the same place they have the same atmospheric conditions they have the same weather they have the same climate but they won't even see that there are four kind of snowflakes and you know the reason why norwegian as a language has four words for four different kinds of snowflakes whereas swedish does not right oh. so just because your language offers you four you can even see the four if you and i can't because we don't have four different words for snowflakes right so if if you look at it the way your language has been taught to you makes you see or not see a difference in what you look and that is applicable even to math so if i have to look at it this way um i have to put it this way watching the world through the math class that's what i see is that um to be absolute to be able to compare and and send five six cognitive abilities which i talk about everywhere i go artistic in its sense because some of them are spatial sensory precision visual sensory precision being able to visualize being able to reflect so that th- these don't even look mathematical to you if i say it but these are ways in which the way you look at math changes the way you look at the world and um and that's because you're more observant and let me tell you how right like i'm talking to you right now and i am also doing let's say the table of 43 on the back of my mind i'm doing 43 86 129 172 215 253 3 44 3 87 430 473 516 559 602 i'm continuing to talk to you at the same time i'm at 8860903904698910321071181161 i'm continuing to do that i'm at 13331376 and i've seen that you've blinked eight times since i started doing this and i'm at 17631806184918921931978 the only way this is possible is that i'm being observant and i'm being consistently observant 21932236 by doing calculations doing this talking to you at the same time now yeah. how am i able to achieve this state is of being able to multitask is because my thoughts and my agility of thoughts are controlled by how i have trained myself in math right these are not methods these are thought modules and these um, maybe and i'm doing it deliberately to show you the different uh, the, the impact of it but if you look at this this has a lot of physical relevance which is that today if i have to think about two things at the same time i know when to think about what i know what i'm doing i know how to, how do i count i know i'm i'm being present at the moment for instance um you're here right now and if i ask you if i for a, just a moment think say that all the people who are looking at here um just try telling yourself that you're going to remember this image right at how you see for the rest of your life right if i just say that you're going to remember this for the rest of your life okay take 5 seconds 1 2 3 4 5 you're going to remember this image for the rest of your life yeah when i say this you try and you see you observe the details which have been hiding in plain sight for a long time right like for instance you're looking at the phone i have an eiffel tower behind this i've not noticed this until now but i have now right i see what what is in front of me i'm more conscious so um this is something which is very important and I, i mean for the people who are into pop culture here sherlock holmes mind palace that's what i'm talking about right so it it is possible and it is something which we which i personally believe is not a super power but it's just a way you tell yourself that being present being concentrated some people say concentrate at a point it's not really possible the human brain is bound to distraction right it's bound to distraction how do you train yourself to manage these distractions is what is going to determine your productivity 
your art, your your state of mind, your cognitive ability development, or whatever. But at the end of the day, I think how do I look at it is that math is math is a game, and um, you play it right. And the, the moment you start playing more and more of it is when it becomes. And if, when I say math, I'm also speaking very very basically. I'm talking about arithmetic, not any beyond math at, at this point of time, because that's also something which I do. talk about everywhere i go advanced mathematics and why it's relevant but for now i'm restricting my conversation only to arithmetic about how calculations in general are my literature and my shakespeare that's that's basically what i'm talking about yeah that's amazing with all this how does a day look like in your life <laughs> um how does my day look like it's it's interesting it's um, a lot of work because with exploring infinities the firm which i had expinfi.com um i had a lot of courses for kids across kids and students across um across the world um we have multiple batches in stay kids so i've have three four hours of classes other than that i had something called the vision math foundation where we work on building numeracy across as mentioned before 10 million children one crore is the target for the next 2 3 years one crore children changing the way they look at math um in general right from the bottom tops up right so um, we working with big initiatives like the unesco say it say it uh, very big foundations names which i which i don't think i should take right now but um yeah very big organizations in in impacting this even the government of telangana for that matter i think we lost your connection hello hello Yeah, we can hear you, but I think the video is loading. Hello. Yeah, Bhavani Prakash, we can actually hear you, but uh, I'm not sure about the video. I think we lost the connection. Let me just. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I think we just lost the connection. Let me add. Yeah, hello. I think my connection dropped for a couple of uh, seconds. Yeah. Second. Yeah. So um yeah. So what I was saying is that. with vision math foundation and the initiatives like these we plan on uh, changing the way kids across the world look at math and also promote it as an art form to not only kids but also individuals across age groups and yeah it starts with me doing a lot of shows across but also at the same time uh, showing meaningful learning pathways for people so at the center of this that's why uh, my focus has been about talking about math to artists uh talking about math to sportsmen because the education route goes in the education route and that has been that is a bigger challenge to fight sometime later but for now to get people at least one crore kids excited about what math is 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 the go to uh, scene so yeah that's something which i do other than that i'm i'm um, i don't know i'm i stay in hyderabad i'm here um we i keep working on stuff but at the end of the day i i keep going to my parties and meetups and, and stuff like that so it's not like i am someone who's just dedicated to this i'm 21 so for the people here uh if you are 21 and you want to hit me up you can definitely do that go to my profile and you can hit me up because um, not only we're talking about math but at the same time i believe that um that it's important for you to chill so i do that as well a lot yeah That's amazing. You surely do inspire a lot of people here. But what keeps you going? What's your inspiration? Tell us more about it. Um. Okay, that's a hard thing because I don't. I can't really count on one thing which I would say. But I think, um, I personally don't believe in one big aspiration in life. Uh, I I I I believe that there are several small things which constitute to a larger good. and one thing which does keep me going is that i am at this place in the helm of place where people are willing to um willing to look at a possibility of how this can be fun watching streams of how math can be fun uh doing streams where this can be entertaining 
so what keeps me going is is the potential one crore children who can change the way they look at the world around them that's one thing and on the other side i think uh just like how this said that this is a sport or whatever i really do enjoy a lot of small things in life be it be it hanging out um with a bunch of friends be it making new uh, acquaintances traveling going for that occasional tour here and there talking to and getting global exposure and takes on what this is so yeah i think what keeps me going there are a lot of things but uh, at the end of the day the central goal is that um i believe that there is a purpose which has to be achieved and it takes time and efforts to reach there but the day you do that's when you'll feel complete because it's awesome. a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, responsibility when you are the fastest human calculator in the world and and people look up to you um, the last thing which i would want to say is that i have my records and i'm chilling so <laughs> there should be something we should give back right so that's that's i think what i am what i am focused on yeah so there are few uh, people asking you how how was your school life and did you start loving maths from your schooling so how I was it was very life? ordinary i was in bharati vidya bhavan hyderabad in jubilee hills i was had a bunch of friends i always um, almost never ever uh, did anything which school expects you to be it assignments be it assessments being on time <laughs> not having a good attendance and stuff so in that way i was pretty much a normal kid um my love for math grew as i started visiting competitions through whatever i learned and the moment i became the national champion was when i knew that i liked it at the same time i was good at it so that's when the up the up, uphill happened but otherwise my school was pretty normal i i went to school i came back i had bunch of friends we used to talk about i used to play farm bill on facebook whatever i mean there are a lot of things which we used to do back then right i mean I was in school in 2013 2014 is when I finished my 10th so it's been a long while so yeah mm-hmm. bhavanites yeah bhavanites cheer cool um so yeah um, after that my 11th and 12th was pretty hectic because of the same old telugu thing which people do go to the iit preparation go do stuff and go I mean i did everything which a regular person would do but it's just that um the the other pathway which i have taken was something which was supposed to be maturing 2016 2017 who knew back then so yeah awesome so i think and also uh, regarding the bhavan you will always find somebody from that school everywhere you go absolutely and i i think um it's good to see people who have been in similar uh, places and went on to extremely different pathways later on but then you were like you have the sudden feeling of oh 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 yeah 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 back then back then in fact i actually shot a small um documentary film in bhavans very recently it's supposed to air in february or or, or march so that would be a great thing to see of course yes and how was the experience getting a call from the president of india and being featured in great channels like bbc and other things How, how was the whole experience uh it was fantastic um it was great and it also is sort of a way where people tell you that oh wow i mean it's a great thing and i realized that i'm happy that um it, it, the the whole uh, concept of math being something which people celebrate and people talk about across the world is is a great thing it's it's a it's a celebration for uh, or a step towards changing the way this look this is looked at across the world so in that way i'm very happy and yeah i still look forward to a lot of more engagement there because there's still a lot more to do things have just begun and um bottom line is that it's it's obviously a fantastic feeling to have someone like the president and the vice president of india call you and say that congratulations you've done well and the same time i was actually on a bbc radio show at the same time and uh, and they were like okay this 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 and we are proud of you or whatever and then then there is this sense of pride which is which you carry but also as as i mentioned a huge responsibility because the community is yet to know or yet to benefit from this achievement uh than than what it is just mere uh, whatever mere, mere celebration so yeah that should be it so i think at the same time it's being extremely held accountable for but at the same time very very encouraging Yeah that's awesome. So how did your friends and family react to this whole thing because I think that's not a small thing of course and I personally have heard the reels and the video of the president calling you and the voice recording and 
I've actually showed it to my parents and they were surprised to see a 21 year old guy doing amazing job with the mathematics. So how did your friends and family react to this? They're all happy. Uh, one more thing is that um, see at the end of the day I think they know me for who I am as a person beyond my own uh, calculations abilities or whatever I do and stuff. So they know that I have I'm a person who's with, with his own flaws with with his own sense of values. to know that there are own there are my own places where i struggle there are places where i own where i have my own uh, set of problems and and i'm clueless about so i think they have been extremely encouraging at the same time have celebrated with me extensively on this and yeah i think um, somehow i know that i i for a fact know that my family has always been expecting this some day or the other so it's not that big a surprise it's just that it came in at the right time so yeah i think i'll say i hope i hold the record for four years now so what happened was just to the olympic gold medal then i i hold the record for a long time so it's we were expecting it but it's just that it went into a very grand celebration and something which i think is necessary for in a field which i am in today and then uh, there are people asking you uh, how how do you feel being close to perfect i don't think i'm anywhere close to being perfect right except for let's say being able to do pro- perfect calculations there's a lot of things which i personally think i'm supposed to improve myself on and more importantly i personally think that no one's ever perfect right so the things which you need to do much better the things which you learn from on a daily basis and and i would say that it's great to be absolutely correct in calculations but at the same time it's like being good at anything you are right i'm sure everyone's good at something and it's just that at the end of the day you're you're just still as handicapped in the other things as you would be and you're still trying to learn and figure your way out so i personally don't think that i consider myself to be perfect at all so there's a lot lot more to do before i would even come close to saying that so yeah that's awesome i see uh, people asking about multitasking from the moment you talked about it how how can one adapt multitasking or um, you know just started new for the beginners okay i i think something which i tell people everywhere is that i think you can start by putting one activity every day consciously giving 10 minutes to it where you say that i'm going to do this all right for instance when i go in a car i count the number of metro pillars which i'm passing by right while while talking to someone while 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 having a conversation while scrolling through the phone now oh. this is a conscious effort you can you can do that everyone can do that you see that do you see yourself doing that all the time when you were a kid when you were in a park you probably jumped in those squares didn't go on to the grass kids like patterns people like patterns it's just that we don't really establish that love for them but if you do you'll actually find a lot of um, good things there um my activities are majorly i don't i don't really practice by sitting down and saying something but i try to find things around me when i'm not doing anything which i can really really count so majorly i think multitasking can start when you think about something on one side count something on the other side right counting is a good way to start the second activity because there is absoluteness right it's not like i'm asking you to think about something and also do something else yeah i'm asking you to think about something and also count on the other side so counting and things can go hand in hand it's a very very start uh, it's a very start um, start sort of a thing to do which is a very good activity other than that you can open my profile there are tons of links which i give where you can go practice and where you can go register yourself play games and stuff right something which i personally believe can be a very good incentive expnfree.com/play if you open it up log in you can find tons of activities which you guys can do and uh, and start your journey in uh, what multitasking is what arithmetic is what calculations are or whatever there is i i keep i i am actually releasing a couple of playlists even on my um, on my instagram on my instagram and youtube on this sometime soon so yeah that's awesome Uh, I also wanted to ask you how important is artificial intelligence, and uh, are you working on any such projects right now? Um, okay, now this is moving towards technology, and while I really appreciate it and I love it, and I work on several uh, things on that front, I personally believe that um, artificial intelligence is just the way you train your computer to train itself, right? So it's, imagine this way: I'm. telling you how you should train yourself later on right so that that's essentially it um the importance of understanding human intelligence to establish this is very important is is high we don't do that quite often you look at exploringinfinities.com scroll through 
the cognitive abilities you'll see how these are very close to what a lot of computer scientific artificial intelligent concepts are yes i i do work on a few of them which are again artificial intelligence is not about robots speaking to you right it's about way more than that it's about customizing what you need it's about seeing and giving you that extra netflix prediction giving you that next spotify algorithm these are things which are helping creators and people across the world and yeah there is a lot of things to do but it's a long way before uh, of understanding human intelligence before um, we can even talk about what more is there to achieve there so yeah i personally think that there is it's a beautiful space to be in but um, at the same time artificial intelligence is not only about codes it's about understanding the math behind it it's about understanding the human cognition behind it and something which you can do through what i have just mentioned until now yeah and um, when was the first time uh, you break the shakuntala devi's record um, like to anybody who's watching their live or to anybody from our generation no no her like just because of the movie with the avalan or whatever it is so when was the first time you break her record and uh, how what kind of role did she play in your life um i never met her obviously but um i think it was a good good thing to see someone um, indian at the front running the side of what world mental calculators were all about the records were later broken by mr scott flansburg from the us whom i have met personally great guy whose record i went on to break in a few ways um the the role which these people played the math maestros i'm talking about is that these people made math performable on stage and that is something which i think one has to give extensive credit to them about that um to make math something artistic by presenting it in front of people and getting people clap shocked and also at the same time appreciate this is a um, a fantastic a fantastic effort and that's something which i think is the biggest inspiration i take from them which is to carry this share this with people and at the same time also talk about house because this was in an era where digital media was not a part this is an era where social media was not there so it's not that a lot of people knew what she was doing nor was was shakuntala devi ma'am in a position to teach everyone this so to tell people about this i am in a significantly much more a uh, privileged position to 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 at least get to the audience which wants to hear about it in a much more detailed consistent way rather than a one off show and i think that these people's vision which started a long time ago to perform math and show people the world of it i think extends all the way from calculations to looking at the beauty outside and i think my purpose has been partially even paved by them Yes um and I, after watching the movie I went back to YouTube to find a few videos of her I saw I saw Shakuntala Devi ma'am stating that uh, don't call maths a lecture it is an entertainment and what I do on stage is an entertainment I think that's something beyond our imagination because maths has always been considered to be boring lectures but calling it an entertainment at that you know stage of life was something amazing absolutely. absolutely undoubtedly yes and where do you see yourself in the next 5 years the basic question <laughs> um okay let's just say one year at a time but i see doing several projects like these across the world um doing tons of shows at the same time doing hundreds of more of these lives where we talk about it spread it as an art form have an entire following people follow um and do challenge play games have tournaments around this and um yeah i personally think that i'm 21 26 is a long way a long way ahead because it's not been that many years since even i've gone ahead and broke the world record so it's a, it's a good chunk of time and i believe that i i would want to put it to use as much as i can to and enable more people understand this enable more people come out of math phobia because math phobia 75% of the world is math phobic 3 out of every 4 children have a trouble understanding basic math and this is not just a problem which looks very academic but this is the number two reason after economic status to make people drop out of school so it's a bigger process it's it, it's about literacy it's about equal opportunity for all it's about it's about growth 
it's about econ- economic growth it's about everything which uh, we need for the growth of a nation or the growth of the world at large towards equality towards um, a society where everyone's given equal opportunity towards building a gender uh, bridged society so if you see all of these this has an aspiration towards sustainable development goals as people say so to put forth in process such uh, projects which project these uh, these aspirations globally is where i see myself in the next 5 4 to 5 years yeah that's awesome that's amazing and um yeah tell us more about the exploring infinity so that people who are watching this live session know more about it and spread it out exploring infinity is is a is a, is my 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 tech startup where we have a lot of for the people who are active asking for an activity just go to my uh, go to my instagram i'm going to post a link in my bio you can click it play the game and post the score right just post the score tag unica tag fastest human calculator as the activity i'm going to run you through it towards the end but um exploring infinity is a math education startup which um was started to provide a cognitive ability development brain training and a ma- and, and a fun math learning trajectory for kids across who are already investing themselves into coding classes into into several other stuff which i personally don't think are relevant enough for someone's growth now um if I have to put it this way it's making math fun for people and uh, it's making them three to four times quicker at the same time but being making it fun is the most important more important uh, aspect of it so they have we have courses called math wizard and turn on the computer new as the name suggests what do they do math wizards and turn on the computer new for the kids of the age 6 to 10 and 11 to 17 so these are courses where where kids have 30 live sessions enjoy the joy of learning math become quicker and at the end of the day even chart trajectories learning trajectories into learning science the right way learning economics the right way learning social sciences learning learning technology through math as its front running pillar so um so yeah celebrating the joy of learning math through courseware is the objective of exploring infinity is and for the people who are interested to look more into it you can check out expinfi.com expinfi expinfi.com um and then you'll find the details of the courseware the success stories and stuff like that there uh and for the people who are saying activity you can actually go uh, follow fastest human calculator i'm going to put up a story right after this with this and i'm going to put the link in my bio you can go find your own uh, challenge yeah you can you can you can go do that that's awesome and um, what is one takeaway that you want to give us or uh, any message that you want to end this live session with i'm not going to go generic and say that life is this life is that that, that i think i think a lot of people say that but i think i would say that math is an art form and i'm telling you i'm, I'm actually telling you it is an art form and um, the only way you learn this art form is by accepting it first and also by constantly in look being in lookout for what this is and probably learning it in a very different way than you have because the phobia of maths has not been because of your learning it's been because of the way it has been taught to you and the way it has been taught to you is bound to change which means that your perception on it is also bound to change so math is fun i think that's my that's my um, three words for the day that's awesome so other than the live courses that you offer do you conduct workshops like is there anything where uh... absolutely so uh, for the people who um, look into wxpinfi.com you can find courseware workshops talks sessions everything which you can think of which there would be in, from an education company you will find it there that's awesome there sai teja asking you your new year resolution um work more have more fun and be dedicated to what you do i think that should be it that's my new year resolution every year and that's going to be the same this year also That's awesome. It was great having you on live uh, in the small talk session Banu Prakash and um, you have been great like I see there's okay you already posted the link to everybody who is viewing this live session there's a link already posted by the fastest human calculator it it was an honor having you here and um, you know you you make people fall in love with maths is what i realized at the end of 
I'm sure if you, if at the end of the day, if there are people who think that it is that way, then I think we have done. My job is half done, and uh, the next is that how you how do you realize it? So yeah. Yeah, and people realize their purpose of life very late, but it's it's a blessing to you know see you do wonders at twenty one. I I think many many more achievements to go. Uh, I can expect a movie on you too as well. <laughs> yeah that's a long way forward but i'm looking forward to actually having this conversation with uh, the math conversation with more artists in the days to come having more uh, more relatively orthodox art people talking about this so yeah I mean see you then yeah to end this live session i'm a mandala artist by the way <laughs> that's fantastic that's that's fantastic maybe maybe you should actually do a post around uh, around that and then i can actually do a critical appreciate uh, appreciation on it through through stuff so yeah it'll be fun now that's something sure. which i absolutely love art and math yeah that's awesome you you made it sound so beautiful like <laughs> i should start practicing math and i'm definitely going to check out uh, the exploring infinities and uh, your your page has definitely been lively i have stalked you since last two days and uh, I think you're a great orator too. You you love music, you love art. You're a true multitasker. <laughs> it's mean, awesome to have. Blessing. It's good good that I have been um, open to let's say art forms in general because I think that's an entirely different discussion on uh, on how uh, it's very important for us to be explore, exposed to uh, non-capitalist art forms. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a great live session. Thank you for calling. Uh, thank you for coming to small talk session. Have a good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.